I met Roosevelt in an online group for single ladies looking for motorcycle riding partners. I lost my husband two short years ago, and I live in Arizona. I'm 63 years old, and losing my husband was like losing a part of myself. We were devoted motorcycle riders and would travel all over the country. When he passed, I kept riding, but I found it lonely, and as I get older, I wanted a friend or maybe even a partner to ride with for short trips around the Southwest. I always did the Route 66 drives. So I joined the group in hoping to meet a special someone or even just a riding partner to join me on short trips who shared motorcycle riding enthusiasm. I live in a gated community, and after my husband passed away, I moved to this retirement-type place. They have community gatherings, swimming pools, all sorts of fun events, what I call the retired people place to keep them busy. When I first met Roosevelt, he messaged me to tell me that he loved my post. I had posted a reply to someone's post about being new to the group. I had welcomed this lady into our group, and I try to welcome everyone into the group, or as many as I can. There's quite a few of us in this group that are from all over the world. Roosevelt messaged me, telling me that he thought my profile photo was beautiful. He introduced himself, saying he was a widow, which I know a woman is a widow and a man is a widower, but for some people they don't seem to know the difference, and I assumed he didn't either. He said he was 59 years old and was born in Amsterdam, but currently lived in California City, California. I asked him if he rides out in the Mojave, and he told me he does and that he and his late wife were soulmates, but she died from a heart attack, and he's been alone ever since. He said he had a daughter named Jennifer, who was 24 years old and lived in New York, but she traveled a lot for work as she was a photographer. Roosevelt told me that he worked creating contracts for major oil companies, and he said he wrote up a building pipeline contract for several companies. I asked him what kind of bike he had, and he didn't answer me. He then started asking me where I lived and if I was single. So the first chat with him, I really never got an answer about his motorcycle. And typically riders will tell you the details of their bike, as if they're talking about their prized possession. I told him I lived in Prescott Valley, Arizona, and I enjoyed riding with my husband until his passing, but I still do short trips around where I live, and I told him about my bike and how long I've been a rider. I shared a little about my husband's death. He had a long battle with cancer, and it was very hard for me. Roosevelt told me that he knew who I was and how I felt, as he had lost his wife and he was devastated but he decided after some time he was ready to move forward and find love. I told him, I'm not really looking for love, but maybe a friendship or possibly a partner, someone to ride around with. At the fact that he lived in California, while not extremely far from me, I told him I'd hope to meet a partner somewhere closer, maybe in Arizona. Roosevelt told me he travels a lot for work and is often in Arizona. And I was a little confused by this, as Arizona is not typically an oil pipeline hub. Solar, yes, but definitely not oil pipelines, so it seemed a little odd. I asked if he rode his bike this way, and he said yes, all the time, and we should get to know each other better. In the group, I would chat with both men and women, because while it's sort of a dating page, it was more of a friendship page to meet other bike people, meet new friends, share adventures through photos and stories. Roosevelt told me I was very smart, kind, and he really liked me. He sent me a friend request, which I accepted, and instantly he started liking all of my photos in my albums. Roosevelt asked me if I had an app called Telegram. He told me it was a chat app, and due to his work, he would travel a lot, and he used it to keep in touch with people. I downloaded the app on my phone, and I couldn't really recall how I got it, but I think I remember downloading it after he asked for my number, and we kept in touch that way. And I was fine at the time, and I really didn't see any harm in it. We connected through Telegram and chatted there. He told me about how his wife had died and his daughter was coping with it. I tried several times to ask him about his motorcycle and about his travels. 
And he told me he would travel the globe and went, quote, motorbiking, as he called it, in countries in Africa. And I found this intriguing because I do love watching biker travel vlogs. He told me he was actually planning a bike adventure to Ghana, which he would fly out there and rent a motorbike to drive across this particular country. When I asked him why he picked Ghana, he said because it's a safe and beautiful country. I admit I knew nothing about Ghana, and I was kind of interested in his adventure. He said he'd been planning the trip for months and would go the first week of October, and which right now when we started chatting, it was the last week of August. I told him about my travels through the Southwest and about how my husband and I once traveled from Los Angeles to Atlanta, through the Midwest, to Oregon, and back down to California. What an adventure it was, I told him, and I've driven through California City before. He replied to me that, his city is very bustling and very busy metropolitan area, and that he's always so busy with his home and its upkeep. And then he sent me a photo of his house in California City. I was a bit confused by this as well. And if you've never been to California City, it's not a busy metropolitan city. It's not actually really a city at all. It's a very desolate town in the Mojave Desert. And yes, people do live there. But it's not bustling. It's actually a rural, unincorporated area. The picture of the home he sent me did not match up with the town. Now granted, I've not been there in five years, but there is no way that California City built up from the desert to have a photo like that and a home like that. I always kept this in my mind as we chatted, and I wasn't sure what was happening, but it seemed all very odd to me. He told me that for work he traveled so much that he started naming off all these places he's been. London, Madrid, and Paris for all of these oil contracts. I wasn't really impressed, and the more I looked into his photos, the more I wondered if he did ride. As, you know, typical motorcycle riders, especially backcountry and travel ones with their motorcycles, just have a certain look. And while, yes, doctors and white-collar people do motorcycle ride, for whatever reason in my gut, I didn't see him as part of a bike family. That wasn't the only deciding factor in me thinking something was wrong. He never once spoke about his bike or gave any details about it. We stayed connected, and he always asked me what I did for work. I let him know I'm retired. My husband and I were very careful our whole lives, and I had the opportunity and, I guess, luck to retire early and enjoy my so-called golden years. This perplexed Roosevelt, and he asked me how I survive, how do I pay my bills. I told him I live in a condo that I own in a private retirement community. I only pay HOA fees once a month. I have savings and a little bit of investment that I live on. I'm happy, and I'm comfortable. He told me that he often invests in Bitcoin and gold investment, and he said one of the reasons he was biking to Ghana on this journey was to invest in a gold company which his business partner told him about, and he was going to physically inspect the gold mine before investing $3 million of his own money. I don't know if he said this to impress me, but it didn't, and I told him, well, that's good. Make sure you're investing in something legit, and it's not a scam. And that's when he told me he was romance scammed by a woman from Florida that he met online who pretended to love him, and he had sent her $5,000, then she cheated on him and blocked him. I told him, well, that's unfortunate, and he should just be more careful. He then asked me of my experiences in online dating, and I told him, I don't date online, and I don't want to. He told me I must be a very lonely woman, and that he will fill my days with his love and attention. Honestly, that's the last thing I wanted. I told him my days are filled with enough love for my family and my love of writing that I don't really want a man. I've had my fairy tale. I'm not looking for another one. My husband was my Prince Charming, and that love story has sadly ended. He then sent me some emoji roses and told me that he had to go, but we'll talk again soon. He then requested I send him pictures of myself, and he sent me a couple of his pictures. I sent him one of me and one of my bike and one of me on my bike, so he knew I was real and I was the real deal. He thanked me and he said I was the most beautiful woman he's ever seen in his life. 
I'm not sure why, but that line made me chuckle. Roosevelt would message me nightly on Telegram, and sometimes I would answer, sometimes I wouldn't. I don't live my life online or to answer chat messages. Most time, unless you SMS me, like my family does, or call me, I don't typically answer messages on apps until I'm ready. Especially from strangers online, as I have a lot of motorcycle friends who will send me videos and photos, and I just respond in my own time. Finally, I guess, since I did not respond to Roosevelt, he tried to call me on Telegram, and the ringing startled me. It was a voice chat thing. I picked up, and on the other end, it was Roosevelt. He asked me where I was, what I was doing, and why I had not responded to his messages. Well, I could hardly understand him. He had a very thick accent, and at first I'd asked him if he was eating something as it sounded like he had a mouthful of food, and he said no, and he yelled to me that the connection was bad and why did I not answer his messages and calls, and he then hung up and started texting. He said he was scared something had happened to me since I live alone as a widow and when I never responded, he thought I had fallen in my home and was in need of help. I laughed at this and told him, no, you're not a family member, so I don't answer the messages every day from you. He told me that he was in love with me and he wanted to become my family and he was so scared that I was hurt and alone. I told him, you're a chat friend, that's it. I then asked him where he's from, as his accent is not a Californian. He told me that he was born in Spain, but his mother was from Iceland, and his father was Russian, and he went to a boarding school in France, and that his teacher at the school was Swedish, so he has a mix of European accents. Wow, that made my head spin. I asked him if he is a United Nation of accents, and his response to me was that he does contracts for the United Nations. So my joke went over his head. I entertained myself with chats here and there, but then I did tell him that at the end of September, I'd be gone for over two weeks. I was planning a ride out to Texas with my best friend and her husband, as they were coming from Washington to visit, so I wouldn't be around much during that time. Roosevelt became upset with me. He told me that we must stay in touch every morning and every night, and... How are we supposed to have a relationship if he can't be in touch with me at all times and know that I'm okay and that we can get to know each other more better? If I constantly ignore him, that won't happen. I told Roosevelt that I wasn't ignoring him, but I'm also not into a relationship with him and he needs to understand we're chat friends. He then wrote this long paragraph about his wife and how he's been lonely since she passed away and how he needs someone to love him and so on. Well, I wished him luck in finding Mrs. Wright, but I again was not looking for a Prince Charming, only friends and maybe a partner to ride my bike around with, maybe meet up for some idle ride-along adventures. I ignored him for a few days. I wanted him to absorb that I didn't want romance. Just a buddy, a partner, a friend. He backed off, only sending me good morning and good night text and hello, my friend, and then he would write with a little heart emoji. Then he told me, the day before my road adventure, that he was getting ready for his flight to Ghana, that he would leave early to check out the gold site and then take his bike adventure. I told him to take video, and I hope he vlogs his trip and considers uploading it to a website or something so people can watch. He told me he would, and I reminded him that I'm going on my trip to Texas and would be gone for a little over two weeks. He told me he would miss me and to please message him daily. I told him again I can't as I will be riding, we are camping, and I'll be without service in a lot of places. Well, this apparently sent him into a tailspin, and he told me that he needs to hear from me at all times. I told him, I'll let him know where I am at here and there and send photos of our rides, but I'm not going to be clinging to my phone. He told me he was preparing for his flight to Ghana, and the night before my trip, I had my riders staying at my condo. We would leave early in the morning. I texted Roosevelt and told him I wouldn't be around as we're leaving early in the morning. I shut my phone off for a good night's sleep, only to wake up the next morning to 32 missed voice calls on that app. 
Then paragraph after paragraph from Roosevelt telling me he's worried for me, my safety, that I should have let him know where I'm at and I should let him be with me as he's a protector, a good man, and why don't we be a couple? All this weird love stuff. This surprised me and it was quite rude. As I told him, I'm not going to be online or on my phone. I had to get rest for my trip. Had I not turned my phone off, I would have been woken up with phone call after phone call from him. I messaged Roosevelt telling him that I was leaving for my trip and my phone was off and I wished him luck on his riding adventure to Ghana. All my friends and I enjoyed our ride and by the time we reached Albuquerque, we had decided to stay at a hotel as we had hit bad weather and we were running behind in our time. During my evening in the hotel after we had all had dinner, I decided to check my phone, and sure enough, Roosevelt had messaged and called. In fact, he sent several messages asking where I was, had I forsaken him, why did I leave him, and message after voice message, and message after message. It was disturbing. I messaged him and told him, I'm with my friends on my ride, and I'm not sitting on my phone. Please stop bothering me. He replied instantly, telling me that he lives and breathes to hear from me. I am his everything and soulmate, and he wanted me to know before he goes on his ride through Ghana. I didn't respond. I thought this was completely uncalled for and bizarre, as we've never had any romantic relationship or even talk before. I went about my night resting, and our group left in the morning to ride out to Texas. After a day of riding, we stopped to rest, and it was such a great time. And of course, upon checking my phone once I was stopped, I was receiving message after message from Roosevelt telling me he had suddenly been in Ghana and on the road, and he had sent me a few photos of what was supposed to be taken by him on the road in Ghana. I told him I hope you have fun. Nothing more. He kept sending love song links and asked me what I thought. I told him, I can't click on the links. I'm in a remote area and my data is a little slow. It won't load videos. He kept sending links to songs over and over again, and he sent rose and heart emojis, telling me he wants to be with me right away. He wishes that he was there with me or I was there with him. I ignored and enjoyed being with my friends. The next morning, I received a message from Roosevelt telling me that he needs me to call him right away. Well, I had a little time before we were all set to travel again, so I entertained myself by calling him. I rang, and he answered. Roosevelt told me that he loved me so much and missed me and that I was his heartbeat and soulmate. He then told me that he was calling me from a Ghana jail and that the police didn't find and confiscate his phone, but that he was arrested because his tour guide was a wanted man, and since he was traveling with him, they suspect he's also part of a criminal organization, and they put him in jail and took his passport away. He told me he needs $10,000 to bail out and flee the country. He started to cry on the phone, stating that the police are demanding the payment or he'll stay in jail forever until his trial and then get life in prison. I don't know whether I should have been concerned or laughed, but I told Roosevelt that I don't have that kind of money and he needs to call the embassy and tell him what's going on. Roosevelt told me the embassy turned their backs on him and I'm his only hope. I decided that this couldn't possibly be real, and I told him I need to consult my accountant and asked him if I could call him back, and he graciously said yes. I ended up telling my riding friends what was going on, and they all thought the same thing. This has to be a scam. We ended up gathering together and calling him back on speakerphone. I told Roosevelt that I had my accountant on the phone as well, and my friend pretended to be my accountant. And we pretend argued about $10,000. I told my fake accountant we needed to send 20000 instead for travel costs and pay for his bail so he can leave Ghana. My fake accountant argued it was too much, and in the meantime, Roosevelt kept saying yes to the money no matter what the amount was. I finally told Roosevelt that I had a change of heart and decided to buy a new motorcycle instead, and we're done, we're over. Our romance is through. This sent Roosevelt into a rage, and he started yelling and screaming that I was playing games and to stop this madness. I told him the only madness is his ridiculous story and how it is the most absurd thing I've heard in my life. 
My friends and I all started laughing at him, and I blocked him and took the app off my phone. And while I know this story was not full of twists and turns of money loss, I feel like I did waste some of his time, and in the end, he was really frustrated with me. And that's it. I continued my journey, and my friends and I had a great travel. Meanwhile, Roosevelt probably went into his antics with someone else. The story he told was ridiculous. Thanks, and have a great day. We'd like to thank this lady for sharing her story. Scammers are in all types of groups with their fake profiles, whether it be a motorcycle riding group or a health group, a fitness group, a crafting group. They just kind of find a place to be and hone in on that and stay there and try to take people's money. If you'd like to share an encounter you had with a romance scammer, whether you lost money or not, you can find us scamming scammers at gmail.com. You can type us your story and we can narrate it into a video. Don't forget to show us any kind of screenshots or proof you have so we can validate your story. Or you can also find us on Facebook, Scamming Cyber Education. Drop us an inbox there and we'll narrate your story into a video. Until next time, stay safe.